What is up guys, it is Barry Michael Doyle here giving you part 11 of our React Native Redux tutorial where I show you how to build this Kappa Keys application from scratch all the way to deployment. Now in the last episode we managed to clean up this Kappa Keys application code. So this is actually what we have so far. Uh, what we're going to do in this video is calculate this Kappa Key over here. And uh, that is done pretty much, it's based off of what the key is here and the Kappa here. So example, if we're on key C, then Kappa 5 means we're going to go to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So key C, Kappa 5 should give us F. So that's how we work that out. And let's say we were on um, A and we had Kappa 5, then it would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So A is Kappa 5 is D. So you've got to work out going back to the start of the index as well if it gets over too much. And all of this is handled in our reducer, the selections reducer. So let's head over to that right now. So here I am in the capo key that we built last time, and I'm gonna head over to the selections reducer. And over here, we need to think about adding another state here. And this state is gonna be the capo key index. So that's the answer that we're gonna get. And that is gonna be set to seven, because basically it's gonna be the selected key index plus the selected capo. And as a start, if we are starting with the initial state, then it's going to be 0, 7, 7. That is how that would work. Now, there's no extra actions that we have to deal with, so we don't have to worry about adding any actions there. All we have to do is worry about adding an extra state. Now, the way we do this is if we have our select key index, we are going to do some stuff before returning it. And that is going to be, we are going to let the capo key index equal state dot selected capo plus the action dot payload. So in this case, because we're selecting a new key index, that action payload is the new selected key. And the current state of the selected capo is also put into place. So what we need to do now is we have to say if this kappa key index, so we've got that now. Now, if that index is equal to, so we're, we're going to change the kappa key index. If kappa key index is bigger than or equal to 12, meaning if it's gone past the maximum index state, we need to actually set it to equal kappa key index minus 12. Otherwise, we just keep it as capo key index. This is just for that situation. If we look back at our app, here we are. Sorry, that uh, took a while to load up. If we look at it, we have, if it goes over 11, then it needs to go back to zero to the start. So that's why this capo key, if it's on five, if you think about it, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's capo A at nine. Now, the problem is it's actually supposed to go to D after Kappa 5, but 9 plus 5 is 14. And if we go to 14, that's going to be out of the scope of what we're looking at. So we need to say minus 12. So 14 minus 12 is 2. So we get 0, 1, 2, and that's how we get to D. I hope you can kind of understand what's going on there. I spelled Kappa key wrong here. Terrible of me. Anyway, that said, now we've calculated the Kappa key. We simply have to include it as the Kappa key index so what we'd be setting is capo key index but because they're the same name i always spell this wrong because those are the same name you can actually just refactor it to be smaller and there we go that's how that works and now we actually have to do the exact same thing with the uh with the select capo just the other way around so in this case we're going to say let capo key index equal, we're going to say the state dot selected key index this time. And then we have the selected key index plus the action dot payload. So in this case, the action dot payload is going to be, I always spell kappa key wrong. I don't know why I do that guys. I'm so sorry. In this case, the action payload is going to be the new capo that we're passing through. So now we're saying same thing again. If the capo key index is equal to capo key well in this case we're setting it to be this so if it is bigger than or equal to 12 then we're going to say the kappa key index is equal to kappa key index minus 12 
Otherwise, we set it just to what it was. We don't do anything. So you could also just put this in an if statement and like, you know, if cap key is bigger than that. Actually, now that I think of it, that's a lot easier to read. So if we just said if capo key index is bigger than or equal to 12, then we're going to say capo key index minus 12. Otherwise, do nothing. So that's actually a lot easier to read compared to, oh, sorry, we've got to actually say it's capo key index. You can even say minus equals 12. That would work. Yeah, flip. See, I'm learning new things every day. Well, on the spot. Not really learning, but just refactoring and making things look a little bit better. See, that looks a lot neater than the other solution that I had. So that said, we can, we need to not forget to set the new state to Kappa key index. And there we go. That's our reducer all finished and completed. So pretty straightforward if you think about it. That's just us calculating this based off of these actions. The actions occur and then in the reducer, we set the Kappa key index. Now we need to go back to our Kappa key. So for the Kappa key, we need to just change this. So this needs to basically be the, well, we're going to change it to something. First of all, we need to connect map state to props because we need to get the selected values. Um, so that's very important. And we actually also need to get the keys because we need to get the keys based off of the selected values. The so selected values will give us the Kappa keys index and the keys would give us the the keys would give us the actual keys that we're going to use to show. So that means we're going to get the, the keys reducers and the selected values from our application state. And we're going to return keys and selected values, which is great. And now what we need to do is all of this is mapped now. So we have the application state. What we simply need to do is get, actually, I'm going to do some deconstructing. So we need to get the, the keys from the stop props and we need to get the Kappa key index. So we need Kappa key index and keys. Now we're going to get those from the stop props, but the Kappa, sorry, I spot that wrong again. The Kappa keys index is actually from the selected values. So it's the stop props dot selected values dot Kappa keys. So we're going to say selected values. And then inside there, we're going to get the Kappa key index. And then we're also going to get the keys from the stop props. Now, yes, lens is just freaking out because we're not using them yet. Finally, what we need to do is set the key that we're going to display. So in here, we're going to say we want to show the keys at Kappa key index, we've calculated that already in the reducer, and we want to get the key of that. And that is actually all we need to do for this part of the application. It's pretty straightforward. So if you think about it, this, this was easy uh, because we had everything else set up. We already had the boilerplate of this set up and the reducer set up. So let's go check it out what it looks like in our application. Right, and here we have it as our application. So we know that without doing any actions, it works because Kappa 7 for C is correct here because we're supposed to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we get G. So that's really cool. Let's see if we change it to D. Then I'd expect it to change to A because if you think D plus 7 is going to be A. So we go to D, and it does change. It changes on the spot. So everything changes as we change things, which is really cool. And if we change the Kappos as well, Here's an easy example. So if I go to E and I said Kappa 1, we'd obviously expect F. And here's another one. If I go to B and I say Kappa 1, I expect C because I'm going 1 from B all the way around to C. So now we actually have our application working as a basic application, which is awesome because, I mean, obviously, if you've got a basic application working, you're doing well. Like this, when I first made the app, this is all it was. Then later on, I added the banner ad because why not? And then I added the, I added the chords modal, which I'm also going to show you how to do because I think adding a modal to your application is really cool. That's also going to be a whole bunch of fun. But anyway, if you've liked it so far, guys, leave comments below saying you're enjoying it. And I'm going to continue making videos to show you how to do the modal and add Facebook ads to this using Expo. 
awesome. Anyway, guys, as usual, be sure to make sure you subscribed if you haven't done that already to see the new content coming out and hit that bell uh, so you can know when new content comes out and watch these videos. Also, be sure to like the video. And as usual, as I keep saying, leave these comments. I love the comments. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ciao.